Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 14 of the chapter Chemical Bonding and Molecular Structure. I was explaining the valence bond theory to you. Moving on with it, let me just explain a little bit more about the types of bonds that are formed as a result of this overlapping. In the previous video, I explained to you the positive overlap and the negative overlap. When is an overlap effective? I will now just elaborate a little bit more on the types of overlap. I told you that when a positive overlap falls, a, a positive orbital or side of the orbital falls over the positive side, there is a reinforcement and that is when the overlap is effective. So a positive overlap results in the formation of a bond while a negative overlap does not result in the formation of a bond. And zero overlap is where overlap is not possible and therefore bond formation as it is is not possible in these directions. So let me just tell you about these two types of overlaps. The first type of overlap or bonding as we call it is known as the sigma overlap or the sigma bonding. And the second type of bond that is formed as a result of overlap of orbitals is the pi bond or the overlap is known as the pi overlap. What is the difference between them? I would like to tell you about it. Sigma bond is a bond which is formed when there is a head-on overlap between two orbitals. When we say head-on, it means that, the, for example, there are two S orbitals and they overlap with each other, as I showed you with these two balloons. These are two S orbitals and they are overlapping. This overlapping is actually a merger of the outermost shell. Some portion of the outermost shell, it kind of interpenetrates. This penetrates into this and this, therefore it appears as if it's merging. So over that area is known as the area of overlap. So when the overlap is head on, that is along the internuclear axis, since S orbitals are spherical, they're not directional in nature, the, orbit, the overlap in S uh, orbitals is always head on. <laughs> if you really see, they only have heads. So obviously the overlap would also be only of the heads. So the SS overlap where you have two S orbitals and the overlap is taking place, it is always head on and such a bonding would be known as a sigma bond that is formed. Now we are assuming that all these overlaps are positive overlaps, right? So what is the bond that will be formed as a result of this? It will be a sigma bond. Then if you have P orbitals, the P orbitals as you know are three P orbitals and the p orbitals are along x, y and z axis. So uh, the internuclear axis is taken to be, conventionally it is taken to be the z axis. So and the z axis if we show it in our, in your diagrams we show it flat horizontal like this. So if this is the z axis and this is a p orbital of the z axis and this is an s orbital and the s only has a head and the P could, you know, it could have overlapped sideways. Then it would have been a zero overlap, as we saw here. If the S orbital comes along here, then it's a zero overlap because it is not overlapping with any of these two lobes. Rather, it is coming to the center, which is to the nucleus. So we see that when the head of the P orbital, that is the PZ orbital, which is along the internuclear axis, it comes and it overlaps with the S orbital. It again is a head-on overlap and therefore such a bond that will be formed would be a sigma bond, right? If you have two, two P orbitals and they, both of them are along the Z axis, along two atoms, this is the internuclear axis and both of them are in this direction where their heads, they have a head-on collision. So as they come closer, they have a head-on collision and the overlap takes place, they merge into one another and the overlap takes place head-on, then it results in the formation of a sigma bond. So there are three types of sigma bonds that are formed. That formed by the SS overlap, two S orbitals, head-on overlap is the, um, is the formation of a sigma S, SS overlap or SS bond 
or you would have sp1 s orbital and 1p orbital if they also overlap along their heads they form a sigma bond and if you have two p orbitals then the p orbitals should be both of them should be along the internuclear axis in order to have their heads overlapping and these heads again it should be an effective overlap for the formation of a bond it should be a positive overlap then the bond that is formed is a sigma bond since in sigma bonds the overlap is head on the extent of overlap is more while in the case of pi bonds a pi bond is one which is formed by the overlap sideways overlap of orbitals and as you see here sideways the upper lobe and the lower lobe of 2p orbitals in a sigma bond you have these 2p orbitals coming and overlapping like this but if it was a pi bond then if it was not pz it was px or py then these orbitals would overlap sideways when they come and overlap sideways the overlap do you see the point of contact is just this top and the bottom along the lobes the while head on they could have merged very well sideways they cannot merge so much there are two reasons why sideways they cannot merge so much remember if there are p orbitals in two atoms they would always have the pz orbital and the first overlap would be a sigma overlap a pi bond is always the second bond one bond has been formed by a sigma overlap now the second bond and the third bond would be formed by the px and py orbitals right the px and py they would overlap sideways to form the pi bond so a bond that is formed by sideways overlapping of orbitals is known as a pi bond and a pi bond is always formed in addition to the first sigma bond the first bond that is formed between two atoms is always a sigma bond and the pi bond is usually when you have a multiple bond between two atoms the second bond and the third bond right so pi bonds are formed so what is the type of overlap that will take place can s orbitals form a pi bond s orbitals only are spherical they do not have a direction it's not possible they are not direction towards the different axis it's a sphere so s orbitals always form sigma bonds they cannot form pi bonds for the formation of a pi bond you need py and p uh, x orbitals assuming that the z orbital is along the internuclear axis and the z orbital has already formed the sigma bond then the px and py orbitals they overlap with each other px of one atom with px of the other py of one with py of the other because for sideways overlapping they should be parallel both the orbitals should be parallel to each other in order for the lobes to overlap with each other so px would combine with px of the adjacent atom and such a sideways overlap leads to the formation of a pi bond and if you see the electrons or the probability of electrons around the nuclei or along the internuclear axis in two atoms which are bound by by pi bonds we see that this pi bond if you really expand this structure a little you will find that in the middle it is zero probability of finding the electron you see the internuclear axis is just like this and the electrons which are shared would be along these two these are like a sandwich you know the donuts you would see them along the uh, two buns in a sandwich you could imagine the upper bun and the lower bun and in the middle is like the patty is actually the nuclear internuclear axis which has no probability density of electrons so this is how the density of electrons around the internuclear axis in a pi bond would look like so what do we see about the strength of bonds sigma and pi bonds if we compare their strengths we know that sigma bond is the first bond it is the strongest bond because it is formed by the head on overlap 
of two orbitals and the extent of overlap is quite high but in a pi bond the extent it is one the electrons forming the sigma bond are already there so they are repelling these electrons the sideways if they are trying to push in together there this bond length is already fixed and on top of it the second bond electrons are trying to come closer the, the orbitals are coming closer in order to cause an overlap so the pi bond the sideways overlap is never so effective the extent of overlap of a sigma bond is much higher and therefore the sigma bond is a stronger bond while a pi bond is a weaker bond secondly the bond length depends on the again the strength of the bond the stronger a bond lesser the bond length so the the sigma bond which is formed between two atoms the first bond that is uh, that would be it, it would be a stronger bond and the bond length would be less while the second bond which is formed it is it cannot push it only pushes the atoms very little towards themselves and therefore the strength of the bond or the extent of overlap of pi bonds is less and the strength is less so this is what i wanted to tell you about the types of overlapping and the nature of covalent bonds now in the next video i'll start discussing the uh, next aspect of uh, why we could not explain the symmetrical uh, structures symmetrical angles of methane ammonia or why water is a bent molecule all this could be explained on the basis of hybridization i'll do that in the next video if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up and uh, uh, subscribe to my channel recommend it to, to all your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry thank you for watching and bye bye for now.